everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm super excited because I got a brand new camera and I'm really hoping that this is recording well because it's my second time recording it. The first time it came out completely blue, which was great. I do wanna take a moment to just say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has been watching my channel, who has been commenting and liking and subscribing. I appreciate you guys so much. It makes my heart so happy every time I see a brand new subscriber. I just stop and I pray and I thank God for you. And, and I hope that this content is blessing your homeschooling journey and your motherhood journey in one way or another. And I hope that with this camera investment, I can not only continue to bring you good quality, but also better quality videos. <laughs> so please stick with me through the trial and error. I'm really hoping this is not recording in blue. My screen looks like it is normal color, but we'll see. Anyway, today we are discussing our word of the year, and it is something that I am so excited about. As we were prepping for our year, I was thinking, what do we really want to encompass it? What do we want to strive for? What is going to be our mission this year? And so our word of the year is enrichment. I want everything that we do with the kids this year to be enriching in one way or another. I want it to be something that speaks life into them, that speaks life into our homeschool, that just really creates those bonds and happiness and that we can just grow. So um, one of the reasons why we chose that word is because we recently moved. And it is in such a an amazing area, an amazing area that is filled with tons of homeschool opportunities. There are so many co-ops, there are homeschool scholarships, there are homeschool conventions. One of the mom groups that I joined, it's not even a homeschooling group, but there are so many homeschoolers. So I'm hoping that this year can just be a year where the kids' learning is enriched, where they can grow, they can read, they can just dive into everything head first and see fruitful things from it. So I know that by now most people have already started their homeschooling year. Um, I'm gonna take you through how I plan our year and just some of the things that I consider. Even if you've already started, there's never you know a wrong time to kind of reassess or incorporate new ideas. So I hope that this video can be helpful to you. So one of the very first things I ask myself is what do I want our homeschool to look like? I, um, I want it to be peace filled. I want it to be joy filled. I want the kids to be happy to come to learning and that's not gonna happen every day. I know that that's not gonna happen today. It didn't happen today. I, <laughs> you guys, sometimes I just need Jesus to get through schoolwork with those babies. I love them so much, but sometimes my son really digs in his heels and it's just difficult. But overall, I want our, our home and our homeschool journey to just be joy-filled. I want it to be peace-filled. If fighting starts and hills start getting dug in, that's when I have learned that we need to step back and we need to reassess and to not push it. And that's okay. But my overall goal is that we will have maybe only a few of those times and it'll be mostly joy-filled. The next is I want it to be Christ-filled. I want to fill our hearts with God's word. I want us to grow in our faith and to just see everything and all of the beauty that he has in store for us. The next is we. I want to build friendships. I want us to build community. Like I said, we're in a new area. I want the kids to grow not only as a family unit, but as individuals. I want them to find friends that feed their souls and that make them happy and that just give them those bonds and you know help us to enjoy this new area and all that you know is in store for us here. Uh, next is encouragement. I really want us to focus on encouraging each other. You know, we're a family team. This year we are really focusing on how can we build our family team in a more um, constructive way? How can we encourage each other and just root for each other and, you know, not get so tied up in me, me, me. But I really, the last thing is to inspire a love of learning. I want my kids to really just have a heart to learn. I, over the summer, I read um, 
The Brave Learner, which is a really great book. And it talked about how if you just set things out for the kids, then they will naturally just want to explore it. And that's really what I want for learning. You know, if we set out books, I want the kids to just say like, oh, what's that? And start reading. Or if we set out art supplies, they go and they create something. And so far we've seen that that's exactly what happens. So I really want to just inspire that love of learning and finding different ways that I can encourage them in those areas. The next is I do like to sit down and set goals for the kids. My goals for Addie are to learn how to read. She has expressed a lot of interest over the last year um, about learning how to read. So last year we just did nothing but teach her her ABCs and the phonics of it. And then this year we have a curriculum that so far has been teaching her to read a lot of sight words. And even today she read three sentences. And it was amazing to see her growth in the last seven weeks of teaching her. And I want to continue to plant the seed of Jesus in her. I want to watch her grow in her faith and come to her faith. And I don't want her to do it on my terms. I don't want her to do it just because, you know, mommy said Jesus is super cool and <laughs> that, you know, we should believe in him. I want her to come to that and just watch her grow in her faith and, and all of the amazing things that he has in store for her. And I want her to build friendships, like I said, for you know what I want our homeschool to look like this year. I really want us to focus on friendships. And for Noah, I, he was baptized over the summer and it was such a beautiful moment. So I really just want to continue to nurture that and plant God's word in him even more. And I want to focus on scripture memorization with that. He is so smart. He does such an amazing job with memorizing things. So I think that this will be such a wonderful time for him to see, um, just to gain confidence in learning and that like he is really good in this particular area. Next is, you know, we just want basic things like teaching him how to multiply, which is what he's gonna learn in his book, but it's a completely new math concept for him. So I really wanna um, help him to grow in that and gain confidence without overwhelming him since it is a new uh, concept. And one of the biggest things I want to work on him with this year is learning how to work independently. I want him to gain confidence in himself and just have that assertiveness that if I say, hey, Noah, I, I need to work with your sister right now. Can you go get your, your language arts book and start on that? That he'll be able to take that, that initiative and he will be able to say like, yes. Because right now when I ask him, he gets a little uh, timid with it. He He's a little unsure of himself. And so I really want to see him just grow and blossom in his own confidence and his his no, him knowing that he has the ability to do it because I never just give him things. I never just give him his book without even looking at it and say, okay, go, go be somebody, go have fun. <laughs> no, like I still want to be there to help him learn and to guide him, but I want him to just start taking those initial few steps of I've got this, I can do it. I'm smart and, and see where that leads him. Now, the next thing I like to look at is activities. So at the beginning of every year, I interview the kids and I say, hey, you know, what went well last year? What did you like doing? What didn't you like? What would you like to incorporate this year? And at the beginning of this year, I asked them what activities would they like to be involved in? You know, like I said, with our move, we have so many more opportunities to do things here than our last date and I really want to see where it'll take us. So this year, they both said that they were interested in doing a co-op, going to soccer, they wanted to continue Kung Fu, they wanted to do swim, and they both wanted to do music. That's like five things. So we had to talk about how, you know, there might be things that we can do right now, and there might be things that we can do later on in the year, but we can't do everything. And even right now, the four they're currently in four things, which is ridiculous. They have a co-op, they have swim, music, and soccer. And I'm really feeling the weight of all of those things. And so I think come November, we're going to be reassessing and dropping something off because I just, I can't keep going like this 
Which leads me to my next point. What activities do you want to do as a mom, as a woman, as a wife? What do you want to invest your time in? Don't be so concerned with making this homeschooling year amazing for your kids that you forget about you and the things that you want to pour yourself into. So if that means that your kids only have to be in one activity so you can do your activity, do that because your soul needs to be nourished too. If you're constantly serving these kids, you can never sit down and be fed yourself. So make a plan not just for your kids, but for you. What do you want to do? And lastly, I like to kind of make a rough schedule of, of what my perfect homeschool day would look like. Now, this does not mean that this is anything that I stick to. I would love it if my kids would just act right <laughs> most of the days. <laughs> and, you know, be ready and be dressed and have your chores done and be ready to learn and in a good attitude by 9 a.m. every single day across the board. But let's be real, your kids sometimes wake up grumpy, you wake up grumpy, you might have something out of the ordinary like a doctor's appointment or a friend might have said, hey, let's get together for a play date. And you're like, yes, another adult, thank you. But that's not always the case. So, you know, <laughs> I like to make a rough draft of what our plan would be, but this is not anything that I'm a slave to. This is not anything that I completely stick to. Some days we start at nine and end by 12. Other days we might start at one and end by four. You're probably gonna hear an airplane in the background. I apologize. Um, but yeah, like if you make a schedule, don't, don't feel like, oh, just because I wrote this on pen and paper, I have to stick to it. You don't have to stick to anything. Right, and um, you know, I said that that was lastly, but it's really not. Uh, sorry, guys. So, I know that a lot of people are into the whole you know, making a mission statement for your homeschool. I don't really feel like I'm good at making mission statements, so instead, we made a motto, and I'm gonna share that with you guys. Ah. It's on our whiteboard and we say it every day before we start school. And hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. I'm gonna to try to cover it up. But it says, I will show up for myself. I can do hard things. I am loved because I always want them to know how loved they are. And Noah added, homeschool is the best, which just makes my heart so happy. All right, so comment below. Let me know what kind of questions do you ask your kids? What kind of things do you incorporate when you're planning out your year? Do you plan out your year? Or do you kind of just go with the flow? <laughs> um, I hope that you found this content helpful. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button and I will see you guys again later. Bye. Bye.